Hi. Louis uh, D was destined for two things. Number one, he was destined to have his name mispronounced for probably his whole life, but definitely after his life. Louis de Bois. And two, he was destined to make one of the greatest scientific connections ever. He really took two ideas that were known at the time and kind of just connected the dots between them. He was born in France, and if he wanted to, he could have sat on his rich butt and done nothing but relax his whole life. But he didn't. Instead, he used his good fortune to try to make a difference. I respect that. He made his discovery in 1924. A lot of physics was already discovered by then. All of these things and all of these equations. But what made him so different, what made him so brilliant, is that he saw a connection that nobody else really did. All of the letters in these equations either had to be one number or it could be any number. All variables for physics equations at the time were like this, across the board, except for the equation of a standing wave. The equation has three variables, wavelength, which could be any length in the right situation, L, which is the length of the whole standing wave, same thing, could be any number, but then there's N, which is not always the same number like 2, but can only be a number that does not have any decimals. It's the number of wavelengths that fit into a standing wave. You can't have a decimal number of wavelengths fit into a standing wave, because then it would destroy itself. You either have this many wavelengths, or you have that many wavelengths. But either way, N will never have a decimal. Anyway, people thought it was a one-off thing. You know, nobody honestly really cared a whole lot. But a couple of years before Du Bois, this guy called Niels Bohr made his model of an atom. And you've probably seen it. It's the one where it looks like a solar system. In his model, electrons orbit in their shells. Well, these shells are at specific places. You can't have an electron be between shells. No electron part in one shell or part in another. Either it's in this shell or it's in that shell. I feel like I'm having deja vu. So basically, the only two things in all of physics that had discrete variables in their equations were these standing waves and these electron orbits. All that Du Bois did was say that waves act this way, where it has to be a 1 or a 2 or a 3, and electrons in orbit act the same way, where it has to be in this shell that shell, or that shell. So I think the fact that these two things have something in common, the standing waves and electrons, that that shows that electrons, which are particles, sometimes act like waves. Sacre bleu! Which led to images like this, Du Bois orbits, and the development of wave-particle duality. He figured that out when he was 30, and he lived for 64 more years. He never married, he had a rich, fulfilling life as a famous scientist, and he even got to see man land on the moon. And he died just one month before The Simpsons was first on TV, March 19, 1987. Thank you, Louis Du Bois, for not being lazy when you could have, but instead thinking differently, and pushing yourself forward, and bringing all of us along with you. Merci.